Greetings and salutations. This is Frederick John here with another weekly video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Rails application templates. Rails Guides defines application templates as simple Ruby files containing domain specific language for adding gems, initializers, etc. to your freshly created Rails project or an existing Rails project. So what does that mean? Essentially, we're going to configure Rails to automatically set up our apps when we run the Rails new command. So if you like to set up all of your applications with Postgres as your database, instead of creating a new project and adding the PG gem and setting up your database and doing all of that housekeeping after you've created the project, you can actually have all of those configuration tasks done automatically for you by creating a Rails template and then telling Rails to use the template when you issue that new command. So we're going to take a look at doing this automatically. So let's get started. When we're talking about Rails application templates, we're talking about the default settings when a new Rails application is created. Are you satisfied with the default settings or do you want to change what a new project is going to look like? Are you satisfied with the gems that are installed or do you want to add more gems to be installed? Do you want to take away some gems? Do you want it to automatically scaffold out some type of resource? Um, are you satisfied with the default database, the SQLite database? Or do you want to use something a little bit more robust like Postgres or Oracle? Rails has settings and options for uh, a number of different database connectors, Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, IBM database, there's a bunch of different settings. So you can customize what your new Rails project is going to look like by setting up this template and telling Rails to use the template. So how do we do this? How do we get started? Well, the best way to do it is to create a Rails RC file. Now that's a hidden file, so it's going to need a dot in front of it. So it's going to be dot Rails RC. So in your home directory, you create a file .railsrc. And what is that going to get you? The RC in Rails stands for run commands. They're default configurations that'll be executed each time you use the Rails new command. So if you want to skip testing, you might create a Rails project and then use an option dash dash skip dash test dash unit and if you're constantly using RSpec for testing for example then you're probably running skip test unit very often or if you're often using a Postgres as your database then you're probably specifying dash D PostgreSQL each time you create a new Rails application. You can set these default settings up that you use on a regular basis in the RC file. So in this example RC file here we have skip test unit and dash D PostgreSQL and then dash dash template equals and then this location where a Rails template RB file is located and then you can further customize the application by using the domain specific language and configuring your Rails template. In the Rails template, there's many different things you can do. For example, there's an after bundle block that you can run. After bundle do, it's fully integrated with git, so you can run commands like git init, git add, git commit, initial commit. This will set up your project for git, it will add all of the files, and it will commit all of the files with the initial commit message after it bundles everything. There's a generate option. You can generate a scaffold and you can see here we use person name string. You can set the root route as the people index. There's a Rails command db migrate. So you can automatically have these things done in the template. To add a gem to your project you just use the word gem space and then in quotes the name of the gem. Now if you know that you want to add a gem to a certain environment, for example RSpec Rails is a gem that you might want to have in development and testing. You can do gem group development test and then a block so do gem RSpec Rails. This will add RSpec Rails to your gem file but only in the 
gem groups development and test. You can also run commands using the keyword run, then the command would be in quotations. For example, here we're using run and then in quotations rm readme.rdoc. That will run the command and remove the readme.rdoc file. Another example would be run and then in quotations touch some file .rb. That will create a file named some file. Keep in mind that the template is executed sequentially. So the code at the top is going to execute first. The code at the bottom is going to execute last. If you want to install all of your gems and have them bundled, you wouldn't want to have gem, you know, the name of some gem at the bottom of your file after a after bundle block because then it would not be included in the bundle. There are some additional, more advanced options for templating as well. You can check out the full API at Rails Guides. So let's take a look at an example template. We're going to have a goal that is to use uh, MongoDB as our database. We're going to be storing environment variables in a file called .rbenv vars and we're going to be using git for our version control. So generally every project, this is what I use. So these are our three goals there. Now those three goals can be broken up by the, each concern, the database, the environmental variables, and the version control. So th since those are the three main concerns, we could take one concern at a time. It's a seven step process. We'll take the database first, Rails uses SQLite as the default database, which is great for development, but we're going to be using MongoDB in production. So because of that, we're going to want to develop with the same database that we're using in production. It's easier to deploy your application if you're using the same database in development as you do in production. To set up the database, when I run Rails new, I'll use dash dash skip dash active dash record. And then I'll include gem mongoid in my gem file and then of course bundle install and then run the configuration which is rails generate mongoid colon config and that configures mongoid generator to set everything up with these three steps we're now ready to use mongodb as our database the next concern is the environment variables we're going to let our band take care of them. Once we've cloned the repository, it's very simple to use environment variables in our app. All we need to do is create a file in our root directory. The file is called .rbenv-vars, so it's a hidden file, and that's going to contain all of our environmental variables. This is the fourth step in the process. And finally, the last three steps are setting up Git for our version control. We're going to run git init to initialize the directory. And then git add, we can use an asterisk or a period or a capital A. We're going to be adding all of the files in the directory recursively to git. And then we're going to commit with a message, initial commit. So with these seven steps, we're going to have accomplished our goal of setting up our Rails project to use MongoDB, rbenvvars, and git as version control. Instead of using these seven steps, we would of course just use a template. These seven steps can be saved because it's going to happen for us automatically. So let's take a look at my RC file and my template. As you can see, this is my home directory. Up at the top it says Freddy. Now I don't have any hidden files here. I use Automator to hide the files and to show the files. So I'm going to click on a Automator script here. And it's going to run this script which is going to show all of the hidden files. Once that's completed I can come back to my home directory and you'll see now there's a lot of folders and files that have dots in front of them. You can see I have a gem folder and a gem RC. I have an IRB RC and what we're looking for is the Rails RC file which is right here.
So I'm going to open that up with Sublime Text. It's a very simple file. It just says skip active record and then use this template which is located in dot files template rb. So if I open up a terminal I can open up my Rails template here and you can see I have some gems that I've added to the development group an additional gem that I've added to the project mongoid I'm creating a file rbenvars which is where I'm storing my environment variables I'm adding a configuration for the time zone to be Eastern Time US and Canada and then finally at the end after bundle do so that way it's going to bundle all of my gems that I've added and then generate the mongoid config and then take care of the git initialization adding files and commit so when I create a new rails project this will all be taken care of from the beginning and so let's test that out rails new Oops, let's actually get out of this directory We'll say Rails new Frost for our project. And that's all we have to do. We don't have to specify any options or anything like that. OK, and now it generated the project for us. I'm going to scroll up here. We can see it says using skip active record and the template that comes from the RC file. It creates all of these files. It adds to the gem file. It says apply the template, adds to the gem file the gems that I wanted to, creates that RBAN VARS file, bundle installs. After, you're all, after installing everything here, it will generate this mongoid config file which creates that mongoid YML and then it adds everything and commits everything with that initial commit message so I can CD into the directory and open it up and you'll see here that I have a new project which already has an rbenvars which is already ready for me to go and start applying my environment variables. In my gem file, we have gem rails 5.1.1. And in development, I have better errors, binder of calling, meta request, and mongoid as well. If I open up the config folder, I have a mongoid file already ready to go. In application RB, we have the time zone is configured for US and Canada. So it looks like everything is working the way that we want it to. That's it for this video. Hopefully, this helps you guys out, helps you save time allows you to easily configure your new projects. If you like this video, give it a like or share it. I'll be coming out with more videos soon, so stay tuned.